to Bulwark, a game about chaotic creativity. No conventional controls, one button to paint the landscape, another to move about. And while you paint towers and walls, people will start to make the world come alive. Keep building, that's the trick. This can be confusing at first, overwhelming even, but don't worry, there's also no mistakes. This is the campaign mode. Here you get a taste of the open world building sandbox. It has a basic tutorial, a resource system based only on distance rather than how much you can produce and an ever expanding set of encounters, world events and unlockables. A word of advice, click and build everywhere. There are no mistakes and slowly figuring out what builds where and how things grow is part of the game. It's about experimenting, so don't be afraid and just go wild. Our people were wrecked during the War of the Tree. Dunkel, Castellus, Moorbridge, and even Port Remit. Nothing remained of our prosperous free houses after decades of attrition. We took what we had and left, in order to resettle in peace, away from the warlords and fiefdoms that remain. We will succeed, because on our backs the past was built. And from our hands, the future will be wrought. Ah, you're finally here. We've already built a few essential buildings. I'll assist you in connecting things up and getting the settlement up and running. While you're on the ground, we will focus on a single building at a time. This will allow you to build outward in a variety of ways and upwards later on. First, connect this outpost to the wood mill, which is located down in the shallow water beside the sea tree fungi. Without wood, we cannot build. Notice how workers are already building houses and industry along the walkway. Wherever you build and our workers can reach, they will settle. Let's now focus on the wood mill. This is your wood mill. It produces and transports wood across walkways. Let us build a basic wooden tower with a walkway towards it. You just built a basic tower. It is used to connect up your settlement and transport vital resources. Workers will also build homes and industry around it. Wood can only travel a limited number of walkways away from the wood mill, but this can be increased by encouraging workers to build along walkways connected to the wood mill. Good work. The wood mill is now delivering wood further than before, so we can move on. Across from the wood mill, we also built a stone quarry. Let's connect that to our settlement. Great job. Now we have access to the quarry, our wooden towers can be upgraded to stone. This stone quarry works similarly to your wood mill. It produces stone that can travel a limited number of walkways. Stone towers create stone walkways. If you rebuild a walkway adjacent to a stone tower in place of a current wooden one, it will be upgraded to stone. Select your outpost so we can start expanding it further. Outposts can be upgraded as well. Let's use the stone to upgrade the outpost to its second stage. We can add foundations to basic towers and outposts. These allow workers to build a higher class of housing on them, increasing the worker output. The worker output of our outpost can be improved further by connecting more towers and walkways to it.
have done well. It is time we started being more ambitious. Take to the skies and seek out iron ore. Your surveyor allows you to build resource extractors, harbors, and outposts on other islands. It will also help to get you out of trouble, which is never far on the Ursi. The world map shows our holdings, which we can fast travel to. I will also mark any freelance captains that enter our waters, as well as suspicious locations. Your surveyor can build a mine on this spot. Workers will mine for ore, and the metallurgical industry will be built up around it. Iron will allow our most advanced towers and buildings. We now have access to iron, but it needs to be transported across the water. Let us build a trade route for ships that can transport iron and other resources back and forth. Several captains are now available. Each captain hauls specific resources. For this trade route, iron is required, but wood is also recommended to expand the mine later. I will carry stone and workers only, nothing else. My ship only carries wood and workers. My ship carries wood. My ship. I will carry. I will only carry iron and workers for our industries. My ship is outfitted to handle iron ore. This route isn't profitable for me without that cargo. Harbors always need to be built as pairs. As soon as you build two, a trade route will connect them. Captains will carry your resources over vast distances. Select your outpost so we can start expanding it further. With iron, we can start building defensive structures such as imposing command towers. But before doing so, we need to upgrade our outpost into a proper citadel. With all major resources now at our disposal, let's focus on building command towers. These can be built with multiple floors as well as additional foundations and balconies. potential to reach high into the sky. Their height can be increased by adding more foundations as well as having better access to workers. Build this tower as high as possible. Change the floor you are building from. Lower floors build foundations, while higher floors build balconies and sky bridges. Balconies are built from high floors. The more expansive your tower, the more powerful your commanders will become if they are assigned here. This command tower is looking stout. We already have an experienced warbird commander among our retinue. Let's assign them to this command tower. Rest assured, friend. My warbirds are the strongest and fastest. My stable mixes Sark Hunter and Northern Greydive traits. Warbirds, the likes of which have not been seen for decades. This tower and its commander now stand watch over our settlement. Their forces will deploy, joining our battle group when the surveyor is near the command tower. Our settlement is established. We have access to resources, a citadel and command tower. It's time to explore the surrounding area, finding more people that will help us thrive. These are desperate times, so we may need to accept unlikely neighbors. But be wary of who you invite in. If they bring their old allegiances, conflict is sure to follow. Now it's all up to you. Head out and explore the Ursi. Rebuild our society as you see fit. Protect yourself and our citizens well. Good luck. The world map shows our holdings, which we can fast travel to. I will also mark any freelance captains that enter our waters, as well
We are but humble refugees, many from the great imperial houses. Please demolish this paltry holding, and we will rebuild wherever you survey a good spot. We are greatly reduced, and this is our last holding. Reject us and many more are certain to pass. Their splinters lost to us. We... Excellent. We have an outpost that provides workers. Be mindful of an outpost's allegiance. This influence is the balance of power for your settlement. Before the Great War, the Imperium held the resources and the Mansa controlled the technology. Now only petty fiefdoms squabble for what little remains of Earthsea's old regime. We have reached a milestone in our population, aligning with the Imperial remnant. This will attract new Imperial captains and commanders to our banner. Installing these people will increase our alignment to the Imperial Remnant further. This wood mill and all of its C3 production are for the Bannerless, and they say it's under our protection. Raid before trade? But we lost some good fighters. How about you send over some workers to the trade harbor, and we can send some wood in exchange? A trading harbor requires resources that can then be exchanged for goods or mercenaries. Be sure to build a connecting harbor. Assigning the right captains that will provide the required outgoing and exchanged incoming resources. My ship only carries wood and workers. My ship carries wood. My ship only carries wood. A new home. Seeing it prosper fills me with pride. There's an anomaly in the distance. Let's investigate. further. Master fabricator of boilers and heated houses at your service. Had some minor mishaps at my previous patron, but I assure you I can deliver fabulous Mark II heated houses.
pirates are raiding one of our trade routes. Send your flagship to deal with them. Hostiles, man the turrets. Victory! A hard-won bit of good news. Let us bring word back to our people. A refugee settlement has been spotted on the horizon. Perhaps we can take these people in. This meager holding was always a last resort. We need a more permanent home. Demolish this temporary haven so we can rebuild upon a spot of your choosing. We carry no grudge. We bring no war. Only grief. The skills that we wield would have become the backbone of your settlement. Excellent. We have an outpost that provides workers. Be mindful of an outpost's allegiance. This influence is the balance of power for your settlement.
this woodmill and all of its sea tree. A fight! Bring it! We are at war. All traitorous commanders and captains are being dismissed. And our forces are on alert. of being raided by pirates. Our wealth and prosperity is too tempting not to be taken. We shall need to defend ourselves. This woodmill and all of its C3 production. Take it, but we will remember this slight. What's a little quarrel amongst brothers and sisters? This was just weeds on the tide. This conquest will escalate the war. We can expect the enemy to strike back stronger, attempting to lay waste to your surveyor and task force. I will carry stone and my ship only carries wood and work. My ship carries wood. My ship only carries... This isn't the best use of my vessel. Fine. trade route is now connected. The captain can transport their specific goods back and forth. Build here. There is no tower with access to wood nearby. Connect from a tower within range to a woodman. My ship carries wood. Things are good. There, there is no stone available for this upgrade. I will carry stone and workers only. It brings me joy to see us.
Something on the horizon. It's very possible that I command the last company of the Royal Guard freelancers in existence. We see a substantial amount of Imperial citizens amongst your own. We wish to serve and support those who still carry the Imperial banner. My company can field a squadron of falconeers on royal strong feather warbirds, each and every one of them a veteran of the War of the Tree, ready to sortie. It's good to feel solid foundations again, a place for my falconeers to call home and defend with their lives. Our warbirds are at the ready. The Imperial Remnant is now the dominant factor in our settlement, a renaissance of the great Imperial Ages past. We are truly the only future for the Ursin, even if some might deny us progress. Buildings on the horizon. The guild used to have surveyors, explorers, brick drivers and more. All funded to keep trade going and expand both Freehouse and Imperium settlements. But alas, much has been lost. Perhaps you can employ some guild surveyors. 